not only are your ears important as you're fishing, but your eyes. I tend to scan around, look, see what the bait's doing, what the birds are doing. Any little sign on the surface that will help me find fish. Ooh, that was a red. A red fish right there. Got it. That was probably the same redfish that blew up earlier. This is about the same area. You know, these fish are really active this time of year. And what they're mainly, what we're keen on right now is uh, pinfish, mullet because they got a lot of fat in these fish. There'll be days where we get colder weather, it kind of shuts everything down. I horsed in that small fish and he came right between my legs. He still had a lot of fight. Came in between my legs, hooked me with a treble hook right on my calf. And so I kind of learned my lesson that, you know, don't horse that fish, wait, wait till he's ready to come in where he flops on his side. Oh, this is like a 21 incher. This is a fat one. Big. Yeah. Well, oh, this is a good. This is like a like a little mini football. Come on in, boy. Please, come on in. Here you go. So what we're doing right here is. We're fishing this little shoreline, and you got an opening up into a uh, bigger bay system here. And what these fish are doing is they're working this bank, feeding on the shrimp, crabs, and mainly mullet that are in here uh, that come in with the tide over the evening. And what these fish are doing, they're traveling all along the shoreline, and it kind of reminds me, <laughs> kind of reminds me of like people when they go to a food court at the mall, and they're just walking around see what they would like to eat you know uh, and take their pick well the same thing with the redfish they're moving all along the shoreline moving on the the food court and as the tide you know and they, they feed as the tide goes out then they move out too but that kind of is an analogy of what it reminds me of as them fish move along that shoreline there he goes Another red, back-to-back -back cast. He came out of the water, didn't he? Rolled on it. Another good one. I'm gonna show you how it ate this plug. I mean, look at that little bitty mouth eat that plug right in there. You really want that fish, you know, depending on how tired it is, you want him to get out of your hands like that and be released safely. I don't like to release, especially a big trout, until I feel that they, they have that energy to just...
Did you get it? Did you get it off? No. Put some pressure on it. <laughs> oh my god. That's Nelly's technique. Throw it the bush. Yeah. Out of the bush. Hook a mangrove. <laughs> drop it in the right spot and get a redfish. Keep that rod right tip. Reel it in. Reel it in. Reel in the slack. Okay, now stop. If he takes off, let him take off. Just keep it tight always. That is amazing. <laughs> right up. Let him take off. Don't reel in. Just keep it tight. Now reel? Yeah. Uh -huh. When he gives up. He's still not ready yet. He's still kind of green. All right. Hold that. Yay. What Nelly just did, again, we were working this windblown shoreline. <laughs> she cast it too far, hooked the mangrove, <laughs> then was trying to get off the mango, finally got off, the lure bounces in the water, and she's, we're talking, carrying a conversation, and then she really, and all of a sudden a redfish comes and blows on it. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay. And just let it go like this. Way to go. Damn. <laughs> well done. Hey, that is the luckiest redfish <laughs>